Former co-workers of retired DEA agent Joseph Bongiovanni. They were called as government witnesses today as his ongoing bribery trial continues. Two on your side, Dave McKinley was in court once again today. So Dave, what else did we learn from the witness stand? Mary Allison Scott, through earlier testimony, jurors learned that when a DEA agent seeks to move on a target, they first swear out an affidavit, which is then presented to the U.S. Attorney's Office for review and submitted to a judge in order to get a warrant. It's a critical step in any investigation, and the context of that was illustrated through today's testimony. A little over a year after police raided the palatial Amherst home of Ron Serio and took down the drug ring he allegedly operated from there, Serio started singing. He told the feds he'd been arranging for payments to DEA agent Joe Bongiovanni for several years in exchange for his efforts to keep the heat off the operation. The U.S. Attorney's Office notified the DEA that because Bongiovanni was now under investigation, it could no longer accept any of his affidavits. Ed Organ was the agent in charge of the Buffalo DEA office at the time and testified he felt he needed to tell Bon Giovanni something to explain this without spilling the beans. So he told him he was being investigated by DEA Internal Affairs after another agent accused Bon Giovanni of using racial epithets to describe blacks and Hispanics, which Bon Giovanni was under investigation for. He just didn't tell him the rest. Months later, Bon Giovanni notified Oregon he'd become aware that Pharaoh's nightclub owner Peter Gerace was under investigation, and he wanted him to know that Gerace was a childhood friend. He described their relationship as very casual, only running into each other occasionally. But during the course of the trial, from their evidence bins, prosecutors had pulled several photos of the two together and produced several witnesses who described them as being very tight and one who said they did cocaine together. DeRace is a co-defendant who will be tried later. Today, the government produced his phone records documenting the numerous times the two had talked during the years of the alleged conspiracy. According to Oregon, in the latter part of 2018, Bon Giovanni continued to issue him updates on how he was trying to distance himself from DeRace by not answering calls, but would occasionally take one so as not to spook him. In one memo, Bon Giovanni noted that Gerace told him that he had heard the agent was being investigated. The last of those memos was sent in December 2018. A month or so later, in early 2019, Bon Giovanni retired, turning in his government-issued phone after wiping it. Now, while the government has made much about that particular point, two women who worked as DEA property clerks at the time testified today that it didn't seem nefarious to them and that it was at the time standard operating procedure. The trial continues next week. On your side in the studio, Dave McKinley, Channel 2 News.